If you have a column of numbers that you need to sum by month, don't use the sum function. That requires a lot of manual work. In this tutorial, I'll present the easiest and most dynamic methods that you should consider. The first is a pivot table. Don't freak out, it's actually so easy to do. The second method is using the sum if function. This method requires formulas, so it can be slightly more complicated, but it can also provide more flexibility, so it is worth checking out. Hi, I'm Rebecca, and I teach Excel users how to create spreadsheets they can be proud of. If you use Excel in any capacity, you're in the right place. No matter what kind of spreadsheet you're working on right now, I'm sure it could use a little bit of updating. That's why I created the Spreadsheet Tune-Up, a free training just for you. In five short videos, I'll teach you the first steps that you need to optimize any spreadsheet. This is the data that we are working with. It has a list of names and a date and then a number of hours. The dates go from January to December in 2023. So we have all the months of the year available and I want to sum by month. So how many total hours are there in each month? The first method that we're going to use is a pivot table. This is formatted as an Excel table. So that means we have the table design tab. This table is called employee hours. To create a pivot table, the standard method would be you go to the insert tab and then click on pivot table. But if you have a t an Excel table, you can also use this button, summarize with pivot table. And then you have to choose where you want the worksheet or the pivot table to be placed. I always like to do it on an existing worksheet because typically I just want to put it right next to the source so I can see them both at once. So now what we have here is like a placeholder for this pivot table. And here we have the list of columns that are in our employee hours table. And it's so simple. All you have to do is drag and drop these fields into these four areas. And you can think of it like the rows is the categories that you want to summarize by, the columns is um, if you want further categorization, and then the values is what you actually want to summarize. So let's start there. What we want to summarize is the hours. So you put the number that you want to sum right there. And it's so cool because as you drag and drop things into these areas, the pivot table is being built right before your eyes. And if you ever want to change things up, that doesn't make any sense, but <laughs> you can just move things around. You could also just um, drag it totally off the table and you can see it changes to a little X and it's just removed now. So it's very, very dynamic and easy to play around, which I totally love. Okay, so we're not doing anything with the name right now, but we do want the date to be in the rows. And you can see when you put a date column into the rows of a pivot table, it automatically created these other, um, these other fields. And what it did was it created a summary by each individual date. And that's not what we want though. We only want these months. So like I did before, I'm going to grab these ones that we don't need and just throw them off the table so we only have months. If you have a date that for some reason is not showing up as a date or it doesn't um, automatically create these months, you can also put this date here and then go up here into the group section and click on group selection. And you can choose all of these different ways to group your date. You can even choose years and you can see that it separated the date out into those um, groups. I would also check and make sure that your dates are actually formatted as a date in Excel. And that looks like um, this number format. It, it says date, it knows that it's a date. So if, if for some reason it's not working, just make sure that your dates are actually formatted as a date. So now in this pivot table, this is essentially everything that we need. We're summing the number of hours by month. And you can see that took like one minute. I was talking through it, but if you just did it straight through, like it literally takes one minute. But I do want to show you another cool thing we can do with pivot tables. You can take this name column or any, any column that you want to filter by or drill down into like one specific thing in this table, you can add it to the filters area and then it creates this little filter up here. 
and then you can choose one specific name and see the sum by month just for that name. If you have multiple, if you want to be able to select multiple items, there's a checkbox here. So you could say for just these employees, what was their sum by month? You could also add multiple columns into this filters area and multiple little filter buttons would show up. Now I'm going to leave this pivot table here so that we can kind of verify the results of the second method, which is called the sum if method. So to start out, what we need to do is add another column to this table and call it month. Uh, don't worry, we're not going to, it's not a complicated formula. The formula that we're going to use is called text and that converts a value, which is stored in a specific number format, like a date into um, like a more pretty version. So we would take this date as the first argument and then the format text is just how do you want to format that number? We want to format it as a month. We only want the months from this date. So in quotations, we're going to put MMM and that tells that's a, a, a date code. It tells Excel that I want only the month as a three digit uh, word. There we go. And since, since it's an Excel table, it copied the formula all the way down the entire table. If you wanted a longer date, you certainly could. All you have to do is change this formula to four M's and then it grabs the entire name of the month. So here we go. Now let's create a sum by month and I'm going to leave these long. So the way to do this, is to start out creating these rows. I'm gonna start by typing in the first two months and then use autofill. So I'm just gonna select these two and then drag down and you can see that Excel is very smart. <laughs> as long as you didn't make any spelling errors, it knows that, oh, you want all the months. You want to increment by one month for each row and it did that for me. So now we're going to use the sum if function right next to each month and I'll show you what goes into each of these arguments. The first argument is the range. This means what is the range that you want to evaluate instead of like how the filter function uses an expression to evaluate in the sum if function, it's separated into two different arguments. There's the range and then the criteria. So in my head, it kind of like the if function. Um, I am imagining I want an expression like if the employee's month column is equal to this cell with the first month, but that's not how the sum if function works. So we have to separate those two. So the first thing, the first argument is the range. So we so just select the range and then put a comma. So now we're on to the second argument, which is the criteria. It's implied or it's it's implicit that the relationship between range and criteria criteria is equals. So you can say this out loud. If the range is equal to the criteria, then take the sum. So we're saying if the employees hours month column is equal to this value in K4, then we're going to sum that range. So then the last argument is the sum range, and then we're going to choose the actual numbers that we want to sum. So it's only going to choose to sum the numbers where the month column matches the value that's right next to this cell. And then we will double click on this little fill handle and it fills it all the way down. And I kept this pivot table here just so we could verify that it actually did the exact right thing. Then if we want to make it a little bit fancy, we could add, um, add headers and then create a table by using control T and then add a summary row by up here in this table design tab. You just check this total row box and it creates our total. So now we've almost recreated this pivot table with a formula. The only thing that we don't have now is this filter, which is a pretty cool feature. So instead we're going to create our own filter uh, manually. So the first thing that we need is a drop down menu here that has all of 
the names from this table. To do that, we have to know what the name of this table is. So just pop on over here and go to the table design tab. It's called employee hours. If it's long and complicated, you might even want to just copy that onto your clipboard. And now we're going to create a drop down menu using data validation. This is in the data tab and it's over here. Um, I always forget which one it is, this little button. So I just hover over it. Oh, it's data validation right here. And then this um, data validation will allow us to create a drop down menu. We're going to choose list and then in the source field, type in equals and then it's a function called indirect. And then in double quotes, you would paste that table name. And then using square brackets, you type in the name of that column. So the name of our column is actually name. Close those square brackets, close parent, close, uh, sorry, close the quotes and then close parentheses. And now this is um, going to grab all of the values from employee hours name column and that's going to be the source for this drop down menu. Um, one of the updates to Excel is that now it, it removes duplicates if you have Excel 365. Um, if there are duplicates in there, there's ways around that, but I'm not going to get into, the, into that in this video. Anyway, so we have, you could also just type in the names if it's not that many. You could just type in that list into that source field. All right, so now we have this here. It doesn't do anything though. Um, what it, because this formula doesn't care about this uh, selection. So we're gonna have to make it care. We're gonna change this into, I'll do it over here. We're gonna have to change this to the sum if s function, which allows you to select multiple criteria. So instead of only evaluating the month cat column, it's gonna also evaluate this name field. Um, the arguments for some, oops, the arguments for some if s are slightly different though. So the first argument is called some range. So we're going to have to move this employee hours column from the end to the beginning. There it is. Okay, so that's the sum range, which is the number that you actually are going to um, sum. And then we have criteria range one which is still going to be the month criteria range criteria one is the value that you're matching it to. So that's still the month here. Then we're going to add another criteria. So just add a comma at the end and the criteria is it going to evaluate the name column in this table and see if it matches comma this name cell up here. Now this cell needs to be absolute, which means when we drag this formula down, we don't want this cell reference to be dragged down. It wouldn't make any sense. So we're going to use the keyboard shortcut F4 to make that absolute. So we want the, it puts a dollar sign before the column and the row. So that means it's fixed. It's absolute. And now this formula is ready. Okay, and because it's an Excel table, we only type it once and it just copies it all the way down. So now let's verify this by choosing that exact same name. And you can see that the numbers match up exactly. So now we've done everything, almost everything <laughs> that here then we, here in the, with the sum if function that we did with the pivot table. The big difference is that the pivot table allows for multiple selections, but at this time you cannot do multiple selections with a drop down menu. So that's really the only difference. What do you think? Will you try the pivot table method or the sum if method? Let me know in the comments. I especially love to hear if this tutorial inspired you to use pivot tables for the first time.